Kia ora and welcome to the slideshow. My name is Joe Fothergill. I'm a 2011 core E fellow from Raumati Beach School. My wiki space to support my research is named Dragon Flights. In older times, ancient mapmakers would mark unknown or dangerous territory with the phrase "Here be dragons." And this year. My e-learning journey has been a flight into unknown territory. Initially I thought the reluctant writers that I would be working with would be my low achieving writers. But one of the things I discovered quite quickly was that in fact, although they were some of my um, key people that I was working with, my high achieving, very literate students were also reluctant writers. Initially I thought I'd really only be looking at blogging with students and did some research into what blogging was all about. I really like what Seth Godin has to say about blogging. The metacognition of what you're going to write, it really is a reflective process. Write first for yourself and then for your audience. Then I thought about what writing actually was. Does writing always have to be pen and paper? Maybe writing could be a song or a dance or a piece of music that you create to tell a story. Does writing have to have words? Could writing, the act of writing, of telling a story, also be the same as creating a painting? I took a day out of my classroom and interviewed children. I interviewed some new entrant children, some Year 2 students, and my, some of my own students. I interviewed the new entrance students. I asked them, what do you like about your writing sessions? I asked them, what did you do first? I asked them, should you go back to everyone writing at the same time? The teacher has varied how she does the writing in the classroom. She starts the literacy session with a modelled story and then the children have 40 minutes until break time and during those 40 minutes they can choose what they do, whether they stay and write with her immediately or whether they go away. The interesting thing that has happened is that the students who go away and play or do another activity, when they come and sit down and write, they're ready to write. I think they're very similar to those people that James Nottingham talks about, those who need to talk to think or think to talk. The talk to think can sit down and write straight away. The think to talk type of people, they need to go away. They need to think about it. Then I interviewed some year two students. They've been blogging. Uh, they have individual blogs. I asked them, how do you feel about your blogs? I asked them, what does it feel like when people comment on your blogs? I asked them what kind of things they talk about when they comment on someone else's blog. And I asked them if there was a difference in their draft writing when they knew they were going to publish it to the blog. Then I interviewed some of my own students. I asked what was the difference between writing in the draft book and writing online? Writing in a draft book was a problem for this young chap. But writing online 
was not. And here's an example. Then I interviewed one of my high achieving students and asked her the same question. What's the difference? I think very important uh, for some students is that last comment about getting really frustrated when you know you've come up with a really good idea the previous day but when you get back to school, you can't remember what it was. When I go online, I notice a lot of my students are online, out of school hours. They're editing, they're writing, they're, they are working in their own time, at their own pace. I've spent this year thinking and talking about writing, talking with my students talking with colleagues, talking with various types of people. And I think that uh, students and adults both need critical feedback uh, for their own writing. I found that uh, I've actually come to a point where I understand uh, how I think about writing, about being able to edit, to reflect, to recraft, rather than just have to sit down with pen and paper and write. I use Google Docs in my classroom and find myself using Google Docs out of personal choice. You can comment on Google Docs. The comments are meaningful. They're specific. And the good thing for students is they don't have to remember what the teacher said because it's sitting there right in front of them. ICTs really aren't a magic fix. You can't create something just by saying, here's a, here's a great online tool, here's a way we can do things. You've actually got to think about the learning. You've actually got to think about the purpose. Why are you doing it? If you look at the tool and think this is a great thing to use, let's use it, without actually also thinking about the learning side of things, you may and quite often will, fail. My conclusion thus far, writing has to have a purpose. Writing doesn't always mean putting pen to paper. Writing is a personal experience. Writing can be collaborative. We need to provide our students with a range of choices and media to write in. My journey into this dragon territory has actually opened up more questions than I had answered. I suspect it's going to be an ongoing process for me and by having my work in a wiki space I will be able to add new insights um, and new information as this year continues and goes on into next. Thank you for listening.